so we're going <laughs> to dive in here with our first topic of the day. Are you ready with all this news of vaccines on the horizon? Are you ready to start to get back into normal life? There's someone who wrote for The Guardian and she's like, um, actually, maybe not yet. She's actually dreading getting back to the grind of things like commuting, so many meetings, getting dressed, even showering regularly. She doesn't want to do anything of the routine that you once had that you are actually dreading going back into. I, I mean, I can say for myself, I've actually loved the pandemic in like lots of interesting ways. And I am looking forward to normal life again, because I feel like the pandemic has helped me discover what I want and what I don't want in my life. And to be fair, I don't have a normal job. So there are certain things that I don't have to do, like commute. But it's been this great awakening moment for me, because the things that I've desperately wanted and needed in my life, I've made those things happen. And the things that I didn't want in my life, I don't miss those things. And I now know I can just say no to those things. So as someone who struggles with social mm -hmm. anxiety, this has been such a blessing for me, the peace, the quiet, <laughs> to get back to myself and discover what it is that I want in my life. And now I'm ready to just go and say, I want to have dinner with these friends. <clears throat> I want to have drinks with these friends. And, you know, I know what I want. <laughs> I'm so excited to get back to normal for me. Uh, you know, you have to understand I have spent the past 20 short years on the road, singing songs, telling stories, playing music, and that was suddenly taken away. Uh, and also for my health, uh, I, my wife is getting close to kicking me out of this house, so uh, I'm going to have to... <laughs> I'm going to have to get back on the road and, and, you know, get out there and sing some songs. I'm excited to get back on stage and and see people again and sing for people again and be able to reach out and, and touch people again. Uh, I'm, I'm missing that. I yeah. feel there's a huge void, a huge void in my life, uh, not being able to be out there mm -hmm. on the road. Oh man. Is there any, I mean, on the other side, I'm a little fans bit... must feel the same way. Like people who love concerts, Johnny, I, I, that's me. So I feel you on that. It's, uh, you feel it's, it's, a little it's really, bit, though, of the others. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's uh, what I was going to say was, <laughs> I feel, you know, whenever whenever something is taken away, uh, it's easy to feel selfish, you know. But what what I have done for so long is is unselfish, you know, is to to give, to give, to give, and uh, not being able to do that is. It's crippling, you know, it really is. It's It's been really tough uh, for a whole bunch of people, production, band, crew, uh, you know, all the people behind the scenes, bus drivers, truck drivers, uh, everybody involved in that. They're, everybody's just having such a, such a difficult time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know I have several friends who are in the performance sort of realm. We ourselves are in that realm. We're used to having an audience and we love that connection and I, we've missed it desperately. But I'd be lying if I said there aren't part of me, is, there isn't part of me that's very apprehensive about getting back to quote unquote normal. Like I, I think if someone told me tomorrow, okay, so here's a date in 2021, you're going to be back in the studio. I would be filled with equal parts delight and dread because I don't think we've completely thought about the toll that this pandemic has had on us and what re-entering sort of quote unquote normal life will feel like. So for me, back in the before times, I already felt a certain amount of anxiety when someone would come into the office and you, everyone who works in an office knows there's always a few people out there who have an idea that they work in sort of essential services. Like I, we work in TV. This is not like working in like as a firefighter. And yet there are everyday heroes who come into work and they're like, bleh, 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 and they're sneezing and they're, bleh. Mel, I'm looking at you who I share an office with. I feel like you are one of those people. And I'm calling you out here because if you do that in the after times, I am going to take you and shove you out the door with love. <laughs> well, listen, it's funny that you bring that up, Sin, because I have never been healthier because I'm away from people and I'm not going to like that part of reentry because as you know, like I, it's like every winter I get so sick and I spread germs to you. It's all love, by the way. It's all love. Um, but uh, <laughs> but also, it reminds me about this vaccine. 
I actually think it's really good for us, even though the world needs a vaccine and we need to eradicate this thing. The way that the rollout is happening logistically, it's just rolling out slowly because like you can only manufacture so much and distribute it to the population so quickly. And so if you look at the timeline for Canada, it's going to happen in bunches. Like there's some people who are going to get it next week, small amounts, but then there's like a big push for March, April. And then there's another bunch of us that will, will get access in the summer. And then they say by September to December, 2021, that's when the entire population theoretically will have access to the vaccine. That's a good thing, especially for healthy people, the healthiest people to ease us in because we're still gonna have to wear masks, we're gonna self to social distance because to me, it reminds me, you know when you watch footage of um, astronauts coming back to earth from like the ISS and they're in these like little capsules and they always say, brace for re-entry and you have to go through the <laughs> atmosphere and it's like the, uh, and I think that's what would happen to us if you just open up society and economy. I don't think we could handle it, guys. I think we would implode. So I'm happy we're going to ease into it. We're still in a mourning phase and we got to ease back into life, if you ask me. <laughs> I just want to go back Indeed. to Cynthia talking about germs because the truth is <laughs> Cynthia has the strongest immune system out of all of us. Cynthia has taken the least amount of sick days, I'm pretty sure. You're never sick. <laughs> I'm the one who sits True. next to Mel on the desk <laughs> when we're in studio, and I'm the one who has the cough because of her all the time, Cynthia. So take it easy. Um, <laughs> I think if we're talking about resilience, there's like physical resilience, which Cynthia has, and then there's emotional resilience. And I think I'm a pretty emotionally resilient person, but this is actually what I'm dreading is we don't know what we're going to be triggered by until we're triggered by it. We don't really know what's like how we've been changed by the last 10 months, this pandemic, the emotional toll. We do know that it has been traumatic. We don't do, do we do know that it has been painful. But how does that pain and trauma manifest itself? Oftentimes, as we hear, it's when you go back into regular times, normal times, and it hits you without you even knowing. And that is what I'm bracing for, like going back in the studio, for example, maybe I see like, I don't know, we have new throw pillows on our couch in the studio. Do, I don't know. Will that set me off? And what happens then? Like, that is what I'm thinking about. And I just don't, I, I actually, that, that, because I'm such a control freak, the fact that I can't control what I'll be reacting to and how is, is something that I'm stressing mm -hmm. myself over.